Welcome to Open the Book. I wonder if you sometimes find it hard to do the right thing. In today's story, we meet someone who was told that he shouldn't pray to God. But this man carried on praying because he believed that it was the right thing to do. As you listen to this story, you will see that God's people are no longer living in their own land. They are living far away from home. Now we have some actions for you to join in as well. And when you hear the word pray or praying or prayed, we're going to put our hands together and we're going to go, Amen. Amen. Lovely. When you hear the word lion, we're going to do a roar and show your claws. We're also going to have a chance to be the lions licking our lips mm. and um, showing your teeth and opening your mouths wide. So there we go. Here are the actions. And I think you might, some of you have guessed the story because today's story is Daniel and the lion. Daniel missed his home in Jerusalem, but he wanted to please God wherever he was. So he worked hard at the jobs he was given, so hard that he became one of the king's own helpers. But he never forgot about God or failed to pray Amen. to him morning, noon, and night. Some of the king's men were jealous of Daniel. They wanted his job for themselves. So they talked the king into making a new law. A law which said, No one but no one is allowed to pray to anyone but the king himself. We've got Daniel now. His enemies laughed. <laughs> and so they had. For the very next morning, Daniel knelt by his window, bowed his head and prayed. Amen. Not to the king, but to God. Thank you for taking care of us in this faraway land. He prayed. Amen. Forgive us and please take us back to our own land soon. Daniel's enemies were watching and before he could even open his eyes they grabbed him and dragged him in front of the king. The king was sad, very sad. He liked Daniel, but he could not break his own law. Daniel must be punished. Throw him into the lion pit. But even as the king gave the order, I forgot to roar. roar. He whispered a prayer Amen. that no one could hear. A prayer Amen. to Daniel's God that somehow Daniel might be saved. The pit was dark. The pit was deep. The lions roar. <sighs> covered its floor like a shaggy growling carpet. They leapt to their feet in a second when Daniel landed among them. They licked their lips. They showed their teeth. Their eyes shone bright and fierce. They opened their mouths and moved towards their dinner. And then they stopped. Shoo! Scat! Go away! 
shouted a voice right behind Daniel. The lion's mouths snapped shut, their tails drooped, and they whimpered away to the corners of the cave. Slowly, Daniel turned round and looked up into the face of an enormous angel. Nothing to worry about now. The angel God smiled. God sent me to watch over you. Why don't you try and get some sleep? The next morning, the king cheered when he discovered that Daniel was still alive. Yay! Pull Daniel out! He ordered his men. And while you're at it, take the men that taught me into that silly law and dump them in the pit instead. <gasps> the men were dumped into the pit instead. The king put his arm around Daniel and walked him back to the palace. Meanwhile, Daniel's enemies cried out for help and the lions enjoyed their breakfast. <laughs> what a fantastic story. Daniel knew that it was wrong to pray to the king and right to pray to God. He risked being eaten by the lions, but he still chose to do what he knew to be right. He honored God and God took care of him. Doing the right thing can be difficult sometimes. Daniel was very brave, wasn't he? As we close our eyes, see if you can think of a time when you had to be brave. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, sometimes other people try to make us do the wrong thing. Please help us to be brave and stand up for what we know is right. Amen. 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 Well, here we have a story where the right thing for Daniel to do was to pray to God and God answered him in a most amazing way with an angel. Now, I've never seen an angel, but I do know of some children and adults who have said that they have seen angels and how they are beautiful messengers of God and also protecting people in the world today. But it wasn't just Daniel that prayed in our story. In fact, the king prayed, didn't he? Even though he wasn't actually sure if Daniel's God was real, he said a prayer to him. I wonder if you have ever felt, I'm not sure if God is real, but you've prayed to him anyway and had a chat, had a go. Well, that's just like the king in our story. The king didn't pray very often, but he really meant it when he did. Daniel used to pray all the time, didn't he? In fact, it told us how many times a day he would have a chat with God. Do you remember how many times? Was it one? Was it two? Was it three? Three times a day, Daniel prayed. And actually, him praying, it didn't make him bad at his job. It wasn't like, oh, I'm wasting so much time. My job's not going to be so good now. It made him really good at his job because he was wise and he cared about the people and he cared about his king. And God gave him all that wisdom and that love as he prayed to God. In fact, it even made other people jealous of him. 
Now, later on in the Bible, we see that Jesus loves to pray a lot, just like Daniel. He prays at all times of night and day, in different types of places. And his disciples are really excited to be able to pray like him. And they ask him, how are we meant to pray? And they are really surprised when Jesus turns around and he starts his prayer with the word Abba, which is like one of us saying daddy or dad. Surely they thought he would say amazing creator, super God or creator of the universe. But no, Jesus said you can start your chats to God with the word dad, daddy, because he loves you just like a perfect parent and he wants to look after you and be your friend. So we learn from Daniel and Jesus that prayer is there for anyone in all sorts of situations and it doesn't have to be really hard, full of long words. And just before we have some prayers led by our wonderful year two pupils, let's try some different ways of praying together. So first up, we're going to do a shouting out thank you God prayer, okay? And we're going to stand up and we're going to put our hands in the air up high. I don't know if any of you have been to a football match or a pop concert or a play where everyone gets very excited and is so thankful and they might clap or cheer. Hooray! So when we're chatting to God to say thank you God for something, we are happy and we are thankful. So we're going to stand up and after three, when I say thank you God for, I want you to shout out loud something that you want to thank God for today. Here we go. Thank you God for chocolate, friends, family, love. Who knows, so many things that you might like to thank God for. Okay, so sometimes people like to kneel to pray. They do this a lot at church. In fact, as you can see behind me, there are actual kneeler cushions that people have made. When we kneel before God, it reminds us that actually he's so much bigger than us. And sometimes if we've done something wrong and we want to be forgiven, it's a way of just saying, I'm really sorry. I'm, I can't really get better on my own. Can you help me? There are a lot of things you can't do when you're kneeling, isn't there? And actually you need somebody else to do things for you. So as we kneel, why don't you take a moment to think in your mind of a place that is really beautiful and reminds you of God's bigness or beauty. And as we kneel, we say, thank you God that you are mighty and powerful and you can help me when things go wrong when I mess up or when things are difficult. Amen. So I'm sitting for this bit of prayer and it's a be still. So we might find it helpful to put our hands together in our laps and to close our eyes. And then we just concentrate on our breathing in and out and we don't say anything. So let's do that. We're just going to be still with God. Have a go.
Wow, three different ways in which we might like to pray. And maybe we've not done any of those before, or maybe we've done some of them before. Our year twos are going to help lead us in some other prayers. Dear God, we pray for the people that are in danger and pray for the, our friends and for the world. And we pray for the people that are sad and ill. Amen. Dear God, please pray for the homeless and ill. So can you make the homeless and give them a home for them? And please can you make the ill and make them feel better and love them to make them better, amen. Dear God, please can you help me and my family to be kind and helpful, amen. Dear God, thank you for our family who keeps us safe and does everything for us and they play with us, amen. Dear God, thank you for creating one wonderful world and for giving children a lovely place where they can start to learn new things. And please help other children to be lovely people when they grow up. Amen. Dear God, thank you for all the animals and plants. The animals are kind and fun to play with. Amen. Dear God, thank you for all the animals and plants. Amen. And now it's time to praise God and pray to him through our praise as we sing a song that would definitely have helped Daniel in the lion's den or maybe the disciples in a storm. It's my lighthouse. Wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold 